Welcome to Party Poker's Premier League Poker 5. This season, 16 world-class players have been divided into two groups of eight. They'll each play four heats where they hope to accumulate points in a bid to progress through to the final table. The top three in both leagues will automatically be there, and then fourth and fifth places will have to play heads up to win the last two seats. In action tonight, it's Group B. Last time they began their first league match, this is what happened. Last time, Group B took their seats for their first league match with one exception, Tom Dwan, who missed his flight from Macau. He had to race across the world to make it to his first heat before being blinded out. We're discussing about where we think, where in the world Tom Dwan is. Yeah, probably over a wire right now. He might just stand a while. <laughs> the first casualty was Benjamin Wilanowski. It was a big hand against Patrick Antonius that did most of the damage. The Finn hit a flush on the turn to lead the global qualifier with 13K. I don't feel anything. Sorry. No, no feeling. <laughs> Wilanowski then pushed all in with 10-7, and Seaver sent him to the rail with three queens. Yay! <laughs> Tom Dwan, after forfeiting his blinds for three levels, then arrived and was eager to take his seat. So I was coming from uh, Macau. There's normally like a ferry right to the airport, and that just wasn't running for like two and a half hours. We were taking like bad sun, whether or not it was his fault that he missed the flight, and I was laying through the one that it probably was his fault. Then we had to go on the next helicopter, which was half an hour later at 11.30, and we ended up getting to the airport like five or 10 minutes late. Tom's Tom. This isn't the first time this has happened. I don't think it's going to be the last. Now I'm here. He immediately won a big pot to put himself back in contention. After a disappointing heat for Vanessa Self, she was knocked out by Scott Seaver in seventh place, and we are left with six players. This is how the chips are stacked after 72 hands. Scott Seaver is at the top of the board with nearly 600K, and at the bottom is Yevgeny Timoshenko with 250,000. But no one is out of the running yet, as the remaining six players continue to battle it out for the maximum 16 points. Bringing you all the action from Group B's first league match is your commentary team, led by Jesse May. Thanks, Kara. Group B has got star power excitement, and now that Tom Dwan has arrived, a little more banter. I'm joined by Phil Locke, the current Group A leader. Now, Phil, you're known for your banter. How can it help you, aside from just entertaining the crowd? I think it actually creates a relaxed atmosphere, and uh, it, it's easier to make decisions when you're in a relaxed atmosphere. However, Scott Seaver, though, you, he's very chatty and talkative and smart, so it's tempting. I would advise anyone to chat with them as much as you want, but nothing post-analysis, no dissecting hands, no, what did you have three hands ago? Just stay away from all that and keep it to just the banter. Yeah, he's been prodding Jungle Man, he's been <laughs> prodding Antonius. Yeah. Don't know if they're gonna answer back, but the stakes will go up as someone from Group B tries to get 16 points. I'm sorry, give me one second to think about how this little tournament plays. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I've ever heard Tom Dwan be excited about the chance of holding. That's not a good start. A thousand at a time. Yep. Grinding it up. That's the way to do it. <laughs> we want the money to go to someone that is a known person. Oh, that like... like you could just so as you were saying, Phil, in your mind, for Scott Siever, yeah. he is... Yeah. Any opportunity he can to be in there with the guys on his immediate left, Antonius and Jungle, he's in there with hands. He's, he's already demonstrated his hold on want drive. He's going to shadow them. He's going to poke them. He's going to yep. kick them. Yep, and they're all going to give respect to Patrick. By the way, if he calls here, it's 100%. I hope Elkie has a big hand so I can crack him. <laughs> it's, all right. it's not on just the merits of seven high. It's, this is like a crackalicious thing. And he has the stack to get in there and try and crack a big stack. That's, this is, a, I think, a trivial call. I was making these calls with four, six of diamonds. You just, <laughs> this you is, know. I hope, I hope. And this is another I hope flat. Elkie's got a huge hand so I can bust him. <laughs> right. This is, I mean, this is what you're doing with... Hope you got the aces, Elkie. Because <laughs> you're really only getting deep with 6-7 when you connect hard. You know, this right. is... Well, we got a gutter ball, top pair, and air. Oh, no, not air. Middle pair with the runner-runner flush draw. And I guess... And runner-runner straight draw. I mean, Elkie is, is obliged to bet here. He's. I think he's he has to, yeah. 28. And now, I th if I was Antonius, I would actually, I would probably call and try and peel an eight, nine, club, something. 
And I would call if I had the ace eight of hearts. I wouldn't raise. He's made the call, and this pot's big. Right now, it's already big. I, I, I think calling is right, but I wouldn't argue a guy for raising with the intent of folding to any action. You know, super blank. Now I think. I mean, Elkie knows that he's, you know, needs. And this will be a check, too. He's now thinking I've got the six or seven to catch up. Oh, wow. Oh, defeat Patrick. And strangely, this is kind of a safe card for Seaver. I mean, yeah, well, if he's going to get pain. Is this pain here? This is just pain. Now it's going to go fold, and then I think you kind of got to raise. But maybe you don't. This is one of my weaknesses. I'm not getting value here. Like, it's probably right to raise, but I often flat because I figure the guy's only going to call if he can beat me, you know? One of the strengths to raising is no one sees what you have if the fold comes in. And that has value because when you get hands later, they, they just people do get frustrated not being able to see your hands for hours. <laughs> and then they snap and they call at some he point. Is, he is such an intimidating presence, Phil. I mean, you'd be intimidated playing against him in, like, so badminton. I mean, he's intimidating. Obviously, Seaver did not... Seaver's it was not now. as simple as bet to call, uh, bet to fold. It wasn't as simple as that for him, or was it? I think that if he bet an Elkie race, it would be an easy fold because he knows, oh, well, Elkie wouldn't do that knowing that there's another player behind him. But once it comes down to the last guy, yeah, there's a fishiness to it, and Seaver might smell something funny. Of course, there is nothing funny here, and all he smells is his own death. I mean, the, the, the fact is he's got half a million. So if he calls here back, then he's still got 380. He'll probably still be in third sp uh, spot, maybe fourth. Obviously, calling and winning would be huge. He's, he's made the good fold. He's too smart. He's too smart. That's, I mean, that's, that's what you're kind of doing if you're betting. You're hoping to just get called. You don't want to get raised. Maybe in his mind, Phil, there... There was such a strong chance that he actually was the one that had the seven in the hand that it wouldn't have made a right. great deal of sense for Patrick it's to true. bluff. Is that because yeah, he, uh, a seven is a reasonable. I mean, when when the guy re-raises you, he either has a seven, a set, or ace ten maybe. And you see the difference right there when when Dwan wins a hand, everybody kind of talks and chirps and laughs. When Patrick wins a hand, there's this gloom that right. falls over the crowd. Because they, they feel like, oh, it's going to be that much more difficult. <laughs> and It's kind of like he sucked the air out of the room. <laughs> it's because I think after you win or lose a hand, the natural thing is to detox from the experience well, with a little banter. But if the, if the guy that just whacked you isn't part of the banter, it's tougher to decompress from it. it so is. it's... I mean, give Patrick a pitchfork and he's death, you know? I mean, he's like, he's the Grim Reaper. Jungle Man's playing this hand. Seven I mean, it, I don't. Tom Dwan is effectively done yes. with the hand in his mind. When when you get two callers with that kind of hand, you, you're looking to improve. Now this is bingo for Antonius, who Six checks. Check. Case check. five hits the now board. Now he might see bet. This is... He's too good. He just knows he's beat. In a way, it's Dwan versus two nemeses. <coughs> Antonius and Jungleman, or maybe not nemeses, but two of the guys who he's played the most number of hands with in the online heads-up arena. Right. It's pretty incredible. Um, so these guys, they don't really have to exchange words to sort of have these and conversations. They, yeah, and they were playing four tables, 200, 400, yeah. you know, no limit, heads up. It's so hard to play even one table heads up online. <laughs> you know, I mean, in some ways, these are the two people that Tom knows more about than anybody in the world, um, and, and yet really hasn't spent much time staring at them down, and vice versa. A jungleman's let out here. What's the play now for Antonius? He's going to raise, hoping his opponent has this. And he won't raise a lot. He wants a 
the flush draws and the two fours to kind of come along. He's only worried about, you know, ace five, ace three. It's not Six much five. to worry about. <coughs> but he calls instead. And, and that's sort of in case He's Jungleman's bluffing, given the opportunity to do it again? Wow. I guess in, in Antonius's mind, he, Jungleman doesn't have a five. There's only one five right. left in the deck. And he probably doesn't have an ace because it's hard to get an ace when there's two on the board. And they both know they're done. But Antonius wanted him to bet. I have a five. I don't know. I'm going to make a small raise in the turn. Or s he has a better kicker. Yeah. <laughs> he has a better kicker. <laughs> that had to be. But I mean, in it. the long range, yeah, if your opponent has such rubbish. And by the way, when the eight peels off, that looks like a blank. There's no, the straights didn't complete, the, the flush didn't complete, so it's a blank. So probably okay to check, hoping you get a, a little bet. Full house. So look, Seaver speaks directly to him. Full house, question mark. And Patrick, no comment. Well, it, it's, that, it's that old axiom about poker, you know? Just because someone asks you a question at the poker table doesn't mean you're obliged to answer. You right, know, in fact, most of the times you get involved and in, you're just, especially Seaver's trying to like open up the can of worms. So if you say, yeah, full house, then the next thing's gonna come in, it will be tr more trappy and clever. And then before you know it, you're like. Right, so, so Antonius just, he doesn't even call. He doesn't even call the first bet there against Seaver. And in fact, have a little bit of this, Scott, you know. This is, I'll let my chips do the talking. Heads up. Heads up. Heads up. Uh, Siever's checking, thinking I might be winning. I mean, it's like, King High is good on these kind of boards a lot of the time. Y you call here quite often if you're Seaver. I try to not be in these spots. I try to just, yesterday I was folding King Rat. Like, I just don't like being out of position ever. Yeah, he, I mean. But he's like the sheriff. He's, you have to get through. And let's, let's be real. These are the two big stacks going at it. I mean, it doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, the nine plays right now. Okay. Yep. Yet again, by the hair of the chinny chin. And Antonius, in his own way, demolishing, running over the path of least resistance. Yep. Looking at these two, Antonius v. Seaver. Uh, anything strike you? Look at the three bet stats. Yeah, Antonius likes the three bet, and Seaver is waiting for Hans to see bet. For a guy who's been so active, you can see that. I mean, Seaver doesn't three bet that much. It's his his. He either calls raises or opens pots, doesn't he? Yep. He's looking to play flops, I guess. He really does. He wants to play flops. Okay. And he, you know, you kind of. Yeah, I like that, but I. Like you, when, when somebody raises and you call with 10 8 of clubs, you're not calling because you have 10 eye. You're calling to try and whack the guy. And, uh, okay, obviously Ace King playing here. You, you're not convinced that in the Premier League format, it's the, the safest. Route. I think you're supposed to, when you have a certain stack size, be involved more with flatting and trying to play some pots because eventually you'll get a hand, you know? Oh, we're going to see something go on here. Now, the question is, how many chips does Yevgeny have? The answer is just over 200K. It's it's 23 big blinds. Seaver knows if he raises here, he has to be willing to get that money in. Yep. And it's it's going in, isn't it? Oh, 100%. wow. 100%. Have, have we got an Elkie here? An Elkie special? No, I think Elkie just knows survival, survival. It's been raise, re-raise. If they're up to it, Whatever, I'll get my hand later. But in the meantime, if they're not up to it, I might go up a pay, I might go up a pay spot, you know. I'm trying to neural net. This is what Yevgeny's face looks like when he has ace king. He looks worried and like he can't win. It's a good look. <laughs> yeah. You know? I think for uh, an ace king, you know. 
James, that. James Dempsey said, you know, it's it's just that his brain is so big, he's waiting for the, the, the blood to rise. You know, it takes a while for the Is thoughts to get up there. <laughs> call. This is a pretty standard hand. There's no, no one's doing any strategy stuff, except Elky was wise to just sidestep this one. And like to, you know, when, when you're on the short stack, as Timoshenko was, you, you can't back away from these, these races, can you? No. This is just standard hand. The result will be that Timoshenko going to grab three points unless he can hit the ace or king. Uh, and Seaver going to go big chip leader. I was not going to fold to you, so thank you. It could come jack and then 10 for a set versus straight, but that's... There's the jack. Look at you. No, he doesn't want to Look make it. Look at you, Phil. Yeah. The morphic yeah. residence. I don't know. <laughs> he definitely is hoping that Seaver makes it straight. It didn't happen. Set. Good game. The first parlay. I should have just gone for the jack and then ended it. I would have looked smarter. Three it's points for Yevgeny. I'm guessing he'll be maybe if not happy with the results, it's quite happy with how he played. And uh, maybe hope for a better seat draw the next time. Blinds hitting seven and 15,000. Squeaky nail time for three of the players there. Even Jungle Man, who's got, I mean, really and truly, the lower two stacks. It's almost like a game of anti-chicken where you just say, I'm going to play so tight. Because <laughs> uh, wars will develop on their own if you just stay on the side of those extra points. And the points aren't just points, they're actually money. You get, a thou what is it, a thousand per point or something? It's a, a $2,000 Two, a point. Yeah, 2000 $2,000 a point. And 1.4 million dollars uh, on the final table in prize money. Call. These are very hard hands to play. He's calling for value because he feels like his hands, I mean, it definitely has value. It's ace eight. It's a button raise, but they're very tricky to play. Because, but this will not be so tricky. <laughs> it's a little more straightforward, this isn't is, it? <laughs> in fact, now that he's trying to figure out how to best play it, he was going for a check raise, so now he's now he's going for a diamond, and now he's effectively got it locked up. I think I would check call here. Betting's tough because you know your opponent has a straight. So you're just going to hear about it. Antonius, there's not. Yeah. He doesn't have a whole lot. He, had, he didn't have much anyways to start. You know. These guys are not shy about entering pots with each other, but after that point of the flop onwards, Phil, they certainly haven't looked like they want to butt, butt heads. Although, I mean, I'd take Antonius in the headbutting department any day. Y you know, the difference between coming in fourth right now and, sorry, fifth and third, uh, huge because those four points take you out of the scrappy little bunching race. thing that happens towards the end when everyone's trying to like qualify for that table and the Yevgeny effect can be completely moved away from if you can just get those points well, what happened here so right, Elkie's open this 32 blind 7 of 15 so Dwan you would think that it's all in or fold I would probably go all in there I mean, but it's easy to say because you're just, you're looking at Jack-9. Um, but he only has, how much does he have? Isn't he one of the... He's the shortest, I mean, this is... 243, he's putting I think most people would call it highly unusual to take a flop off here, but Dwan's got his thing going on. That's a, a gin flop for Elke. He yeah, could just Elke. open shove, like, I mean. And in fact, that probably would just open shove. So two, about 33. Even though you're 70, like. Even though you've nine. got so many outs, you still don't want to like. I don't want the call. The, the yeah. pot is always big enough in these things to just, the chips are so huge. They just, they, they're survivable. It's survival bullets. I don't want, you know. 
but of course you can't go around he's balancing his range if you go around open shoving your big hands like that then everyone knows to insta fold to you you know so it is better to for the law you know in a vacuum you just want those chips but in the long range you can't let people know that you're the open shover guy with big hands because now they you never get called by worse hands you never you know, yeah. it's like a superhero open shover guy <laughs> Coming in again. Seven raise thirty. Anytime you're on a shortish stack and you you don't have a hand that's big enough to call the all in, it, it is a little worrying. I play the same oh. thing. I would just flat. He's just a flatter. But doesn't he really? You really open yourself up if you're receiver when you're doing that much flatting for some guy to squeeze behind. And this king jack of clubs is the hand we've seen Antonius have a million times. <laughs> and I would call as well. This is now everyone's calling. The people that call, they're calling for their, you know, they have hand strength. <laughs> they're hoping it reveals itself. Elky would have flopped two pair with jack nine. How should Antonius play this? Bet into the razor? That's what he's done. That's 50. When you bet out, you get the cleanest information because you've created the first action. If, if they fold, you win the pot, and if they raise, you they're usually not up to it. Juggleman there, not even, well, really not even considering for too long, taking the open-ended straight draw on. How much of the stack would it have cost him? 50,000. 20%. For an eight outer. Five handed when you raise, often your desired scenario is that they all just fold. That's really most of the time what you want because it's rare that you have super primo hands, you know? Citro raise 32. He actually wants somebody to give him action. This is just a very big hand. That's what I had when I gave my ace king guy back action. I mean, you're kind of, this is one of those situations where you're a little bit handcuffed, uh, you know, if you're jungle man, aren't you? Yep, I mean, it's, what's jungle stack? It's, he has 266. Lines he had, seven and 15. He had to call 25, so he's putting in uh, one tenth, one eleventh of a stack. But he has position and a super good hand. I would do this. He's actually out of, he's actually in, in a small oh, Irish a position. small blind? Yeah. But I hear you. Elkie doesn't want to get raised off it, and instead... He's going to lose it. Hmm. Elkie's probably Seven thinking to four. himself, you know, what hands can Jungle Man call right. in the small blind with off a 23 big blind stack? Because in his world... Ace Queen feels good to him. Yeah. Yeah. In, in, you know, in, in his, his world, what? I don't know. There's not a lot of them. I mean, what? Correct. That there that aren't. jungle man could have. Maybe he could have a, a raggedy ace or something. I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. No, he's going for value. He's hoping that he's going to get looked up by ace king or pocket sixes or something. One hundred. It's very important not to give away. Like right now, if he knows, oh, I'm probably just going to call or fold. You should never let your opponent know that because he might get to the point where he says, well, I have ace of diamonds. Would he call an all-in shove? Or, like, can he really be that strong? Like, you know, sometimes I catch myself talking out loud and I'm like, oh, I can't do a whole bunch of stuff now <laughs> because I've said all these other things. I can only call or fold now. So, uh, right. I know what you mean. you got to be more like Patrick. Elkie's showing he can make the big fold, though. Yep. Yeah, and the turn he feels like he's winning, but the extra bet, base theorem, kind of, there's a lot of new information. The guy's, now he's still in there, he's betting, okay, I'll let it go. Yeah. That's why it was always so much easier for you when you could just sort of zip up your hoodie and think. Uh, pick it up. Pick right. It up. I, now that you've, you've done away with the hoodie, it's tough, really. Well, I, I got the beanie, but even if it was funny, beanie, I didn't feel yeah. like wearing the beanie because it was too hot out there and whatever. Yeah.
I just try and keep the social to in between hands because guys like Scott Seaver would just destroy me if I start, had to talk to him during hands. <laughs> he would just know everything. <laughs> I drink so much coffee here, man. Citex raised 30. So much coffee. Seven fold. So, Seaver has one of these funny hands again. It's like just they have value, but they're tough out of position. I, I fold these regularly and. I think it's okay to fold them regularly. You, why play a wizard out of position when, when you can wait to have better position or a better hand? I don't know. It's like well, this will be very interesting if he does it, and I'll tell you why. Because he's had the least three bets of, of pretty much anybody at the table. Right. Yep. You know, and wow, how is Elky supposed to think about this? Knowing how little Seaver has three bets. He has to give credit to it. And the sixes may fold too. It's like, whatever. Does he really want to get involved in her? At least I know. At least I know. I know soon. So. He'll know soon. <laughs> That's, this will be amazing. This will be quite amazing. I mean, Elki took a very strong opinion there. And what, the only. I think Antonis is going to fold him. Mean, he could be against pocket tens. It's just like gross. Why, um, wow, why? <laughs> What's Antonius up to? He's now he's in position, but he's definitely saying to Scott Seaver, You want to play? Let's let's play. Step into my office. They're both sick right now. <laughs> let's see who bet, whoever bets is gonna. Well, it's funny because a bet might not necessarily win. If you call with sixes, this is a good flop for sixes. I mean, it's about as good as you can hope for without it in a set, right? And under the question of how much heart Seaver has, could so anything been six. scarier than bluffing into Antonius? Who called 75 I dimes mean, pre? I, yeah. mean, I mean, look at this. This is this is enough to make you wet yourself. <laughs> And there's no, there's no way Antonius can fold right now, right? Once he's I don't called. think if he called before, he has to call now. This is because this is a, the kind of flop that, you know, helps. Has Seaver got a plan here? You had what? Seaver is a sick one, and so he will fire twice. Because once he makes this bet, Phil, isn't he... You don't make this bet at this stage unless you're trying to represent a queen, do you? No. I mean, you can't really what? make that bet right there with two jacks if you're Seaver, can you? you? He can't make that bet with two jacks, can he? Yeah, I, I think he can. This is a very strong play by Seaver. And for Antonius, if he does choose to continue. I, what I don't do enough is when my opponent is mulling it over, I should be looking at my opponents more often. Like, I'm looking at Patrick, you can kind of taste the story going through his head. Seaver's looking straight ahead. But it's nervous. When you look at the other guy, you feel like they're going to figure out what you're thinking, you know? Wow. You let it go. You kind of have to. Seaver I mean, by the way, if he calls through. there, he's he, he knows it's a super, he's doing a hero call, and he's got to maybe <laughs> make another hero call, and it's tough. That was ridiculous. Ridiculous. That's the value in playing tight. Seaver, it was like the first time he had re, you know, repopped. That was impressive stuff. That was, I mean, Scott Seaver has squared off several times with the monster that is Patrick Antonius. And yep. that time he just barreled it through. Poker is just a beautiful game all around. It's complex, it involves people, psychology, math. I'm very competitive and I love trying to analyze people and poker just gives me an outlet to all of that. My first big win came in 2008 during the World Series of Poker. I won a bracelet in a 5K No Limit event and that was really what propelled me to A, thinking that I could do this as a full-time career and B just gave me the confidence and money to keep playing and playing bigger. And that was really my jumping off point. 
The Premier League is a brilliant tournament. It gathers the best players in the world and it plays a fun and fast format. It's just an honor to have been invited to get to play to it. That alone was a very big deal for me. So now I'm just hoping that I can live up to that honor to do well enough and hopefully win. It would be absolutely huge if I could come out on top of Premier League 5. It's the top, top competition from all around the world. And to really get yourself to the top of a tournament of this caliber and strength just shows that not only am I able to compete with the best in the world, but I'm able to shine as well. I mean, then I'm crushed. Well, blinds are going up nine. again. Now they're going to be 10 and 20,000. Yeah. I think I still um, probably behind. I mean, <laughs> 10 and 20. So now yeah, I mean, like, there is no more raising for the <laughs> bottom two guys. It's all in. If they, it's 10 and 20. Wait, am I right? 60? It is. It's kind of like, it's the weirdest spot because you really want the blinds to be a little higher or your stack to be lower to properly go all in. It's You can almost still raise fold. And Cates has actually put some distance between himself and the bottom two. Yeah. No, not, not a lot, but some. Seaver raised with that ace-10. He's effectively only raising against Antonius because other stacks are too too narrow to cause any damage. Correct. And if you play a7, this is the kind of flop that helps you. Even though it's not luxurious because there's mega draws out there. Is this the chance for Antonius to get his own back? It's Again, tough when you play, that. yeah, if you play the A7s, Seven. you're, it's oftentimes right for you to call and it's gross. If you're okay making gross decisions, then, I mean, I guess I'm calling and I would have called pre-flop. Wow. Wow. That's I didn't expect that. That's a really funny old bet. Obviously, Seaver can't call, but you, you immediately think to yourself, what would he do with nines or tens, right? Right. Do you snap them off? No, you don't, do you? Maybe you do. I would fold nines or tens there if somebody went all in for a lot. Wasn't that a very high-risk play by Antonius? Well, he, I don't know. If he, if he figured, hey, if I had pocket nines, would I fold? <laughs> it's it's the power of the sledgehammer. As your sledgehammer gets bigger, it's if you do something with it, your opponent, you know, they have to have a hand. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that was, was uh that was unexpected. It, when you think about it, it's kind of a solid play. Like it's solid. You're getting a lot of hands that are better than you to fold. Yeah. I'm folding I might even fold two jacks from a whole tournament for like a ton of chips. That was fast. <laughs> I don't know. I know, right? Huh. <laughs> now he's back to being upset about folding. Switches back and forth. And this is a raise. Yeah, now is it an all in against Jungle Man stack, which is. Oh, it's a, okay. I like what he did too, limping. There's a small chance. The thing is, if you limp, you can call the raise, and it's a nice hand, so you do want to see a flop. That's a nice one. And so Antonio's has effectively the nuts. And question is, maybe it is a call. Maybe the thing is, when you see the card, well, I know. You just got to get it in. You have to raise. But if your opponent has air, will he fire again? I guess against the fish with high aggro levels, you could call. I mean, queen is better than a random. Oh, he is called. Yeah, like, like let him hang himself maybe I don't know it's a very strong hand right it's about the exact same. but it will probably go check check I'm guessing okay this is well I, I, he's you know, hanging it he by yeah. the way he's doing this for value there's no way he's doing it because I'm worried about a jack like he's he's right. got to be thinking of course not only that but this is a knowledge of jungle man and their relationship that yep. if Jungle Man is doing this with air, then you have to give him the rope. And, and by the way, thing. maybe he goes all in now. Because would you want to call with like Jack Eight or I guess Ace Jack? You would call if the guy went all in. But he's kind of got to. He knows that Jungle needs the points. When do you get to see the hands? It's the funny thing is if he, the way he's playing it, it looks like the thematic play is to call and let him hang himself again. If you're if that's what you're thinking. If that. Yep. 
So this is thematic with the way he's played it. He's playing it as And the, you have to call yeah, every look, river so, in the book, right? Yes, because he's making it seem like I called with, like, ace four of spades. Look at this now, the, the nuts, effectively. Right. So to be truly thematic, a check, yeah. Wow, this is how you win the money, huh? You just let to be truly thematic. It should have been like a king of hearts on the river, Seven. and then right. see if oh, jungle man right, goes right, all right, in. Right, right, no, but right, I mean, right, right, you know right, what I mean. I don't like, win. I don't win. Turn your hand over. Come on, we'll be here forever. Just turn your hand over. <laughs> <laughs> see turn your hand over. Turn them both over. Come on. Has he gone all in? There we go. See? No, no, no. Right. He checked. Jungle man stopped, last right? Last, last yeah. But didn't want to show them. Right. He, he he pretty much realized what was going on at that stage? Or? I guess in Vienna, it's last aggressor something, and so he had to show even because they checked the river. Is that what happened? I don't know. That's the, uh, I believe that's Mrs. Elke or Elke's partner. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. I'm sure she's used to the swings and pitfalls of, of the stacks. What, what Amazingly, Dwan, Jungleman, the and Elky have now uh, managed to go. Oh, I, I'm, I'm so guessing it's we well. Since, yeah. It's certainly since the it's about 30 it hands. Matter. It's nearly 11 and a half, almost two levels without any crack in the so armor. Cool. They're all really. Oh, yeah. This is a. This is fair. fair this is a, by the way, this has defense. If you get called by a shack, you first you want the fold. Oh, it's a big hit. But look at that, a shack. But you still have value, you know? You're, oh, yeah, and 33 if you get called. Both of these will think it was completely standard. Yeah. Uh, they have <laughs> identical <laughs> stacks, <laughs> I think. Tom Dwan <laughs> may have him out chipped by, by less than a big blind. 5,000 extra. So this is this bodes very well for Dwan. Very difficult for this to be a chop pot. He basically needs to bank the king. And there's uh, Elky's partner, Kathy, watching the big screen. King would be kind of cool if that was a challenge. No flush room, okay. And it's she sees look. the result. Elky's going to end up in fifth. Uh, I think he'll be a little disappointed, Phil, yes. but he played uh, He played. He played great. I think he did. I, it just shows you how tough poker is. You can be a wizard, play great, and come in fifth. It's tough. It is tough. That's why. And the four points that Elke will get right now leave him in the playoff zone, which, look, if you stay wow, in that zone or higher, you're safe-ish. And, yeah. and you're going to keep your, your options open for the, the final heat. Uh, which we've seen can always be very dramatic. But for Tom Dwan, how good <laughs> does he feel? Does he feel great? It's up he the does. third position. Third position with four people left. Third position when there's eight people left is whatever. But when there's four people left, it's massive. And we lose Alki from this first heat with four points. Any big surprises out there in the game? I mean, not really. It was pretty straightforward because the blinds were getting really huge and a lot of tough players. So it was tough for sure, yeah. And you'll be heading into kind of the middle of the pack in terms of points for the next round. Is that going to change your strategy at all? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's probably going to change, like, strategy is going to change with the hit three and four because now I still need to, to win and play to win the next one for sure, yeah. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. We are down to four players in Group B's first league match. The action continues after the break. Welcome back. It's Group B's first league match, and half the field is gone with Scott Siever in the chip lead. Let's head back over to your commentary team of Jesse May and Phil Locke. I'm going to, if the, Tom Dwan does to go on to win or do, do well here, I'm going to try and take him aside and make a serious uh, plea for him to approach every heat. Send the donkey in for three levels, and then he can come. You know? It just goes to show you tight play can be rewarded. The tightest player... Dewan, who didn't play a hand, <laughs> is now in third place. I mean, I, I think I think this has really been a referendum on the power of the box. I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just transfixed by the kings. Even when, oh, he, this could hurt. How, how much you start with, like 350? He just folds twos. 300. No problem. Like more, but all right. He really can't call there because he can't set pedal oh. against that stack. That was the fold. That if it was Patrick that came in, he's calling. Now Patrick is going to give him action, I think. 
yeah, and the the re-raise all in is 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 fairly. Um, I, I would say I, I guess standard, but as as Seaver said, he feels like he's made a big fold there. I can't believe you folded the pocket there. By the way. I think even though Antonius is sick here, I, this is okay to do. King Queen, short stack. I mean, it's. Those like, should be happy. He feels sick now, but it's. Oh, I think I'd take your hand. Yeah. I'll tell you what we're gonna have in a minute. It's not a bad play. The jungle beast is up to whatever 600 and what does he have now? 616. Patrick back to 479. We got a four-way horse race all of a wow. sudden. I mean, wow. the doors it's, have opened up. It's everyone's kind of in the same boat, roughly, except Jungle Man has a little edge, and then Seaver has the fat 870. Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> Welcome to the jungle. It's you know, it just goes to show you the power of hanging about with those stacks. When they double up, they become fat. It's six, eight, eleven, sixteen. Those are the point payouts up now. Now this, I mean, yeah, this is going to be a race, but like, it's so much trickier when people have the fatter stacks. You just hope they fold. And there it is, fold, fold. Fold, fold, Tom. Before Tom looks at his cards, he looks at the stacks and gets everything sorted out. Which is smart, isn't it? He doesn't yep. let the... And he feels like his stack is big enough that he can start looking at flops now. He's got the jack nine. Hey, you know, it's probably not winning, but it's a good hand. And if Tom makes, tries to take Irish position and win this pot, he will not do well. Patrick. <laughs> He has the greatest poker face in the entire world. Yep. It's like, uh, it's like half fear. Expects. Now he's really hoping to get check raise, but. <laughs> is that, I mean, is there anything? But obviously, when you peel off flops, it's a dry flop. You know, there are reasons to just take another card, I, I guess. Not for you, really. No, I'm so, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm transfixed thinking, could Tom Dwan be thinking, like, yeah, no, it's, I'm glad he wasn't thinking anything crazy there. It's like, whatever, the two, t the guy's probably gonna call with jacks or queens. He could have jacks or eights, those are all hands that if Antonis had, he's not gonna fold to a raise, so. Ultimately, I think Tom played it okay. Put it a little bit in, didn't get there, let it go. Nothing wrong with that. Take a peeky boo. Yeah. Seaver, 900. Jungle, Antonius, about 550, and Duan, 400. Remember, the average is 600 right now. We started with 300. Half the field's gone. That means Seven race, the average is doubled. Thinking back over this heat so far, for, for me still the most impressive play the biggest play of the entire heat so far is definitely bet. Seaver's bet right on the turn against Antonius right yeah on the turn that bet took some steel nerves I think Ben's earlier call with tens was just like weird yeah. he just tripped into an accidental get value and then lose hand oh wow Tom Dwan is like that jet ride was nice get coming me over. on a plane to Hong Kong <laughs> and it a little Hollywood, but it's funny because he always looks like he's Hollywooding, and whether he's not or not, you know, the pain, what should I do look, it's always there. So you don't know if he has aces just because he's giving you the look. Unusual call by Seaver anyway on the button, but that's right. kind of what he's been doing, those kind of oh, things. See, oh, I didn't see that Seaver raised he's, to 92. He's, no, he's flatted. Oh, sorry, he's three-betted. To oh. 92,000? I didn't realize either. Oh, my God. Well, that makes it even more interesting. Um, that's a... Because Seavers all of a sudden now started three betting, hasn't he? But. Because four handed, it's hard to call the, when the guy. But anything Duan. except for a, a four bet all in here by Dwan would be just. Six, four, would just seven, be eight. too fishy anyway. Like four fifteen, right? Right around? Yes, yeah, it has to be. And. 
just under four. The thing is, what Seaver was thinking is, look, no one has a hand. So if anyone opens, I'm going to punish them and win the putt because they can't really call. Cause the, but he accidentally ran into two hands there. I think our cards even were supposed. And to now the interesting thing had Seaver behaved uh, Elky style and just folded that hand. Now it might get called. The eights might call. Yeah, yeah. So jungle got lucky that Seaver was in non-squeeze mode. That's awesome. Race fifty thousand. Oh boy, wow. This is interesting, four-handed, it's hard to have pair versus pair, and it's happening right now. Tom hasn't exactly been three betting light, but doesn't he all of a sudden have a stack that if he's going to, to start doing it to Seaver, it yeah. would make a little bit of sense? And, and also, the stacks are deep enough that like what Seaver did earlier with the Jack Rag suited was he recognized we have enough chips to make some moves. So this isn't like a 280,000 all-in play, this is a deep stack about to make a move you know on, on, the, on the one hand Duan's only got 28 big blinds on the other hand him being second in chips if he makes a small three bet here isn't Se Seaver's gonna think you know I maybe I can push him off it yes I think also because he could be just bluffing and eights is a real big hand I, I think if I was eights I I, I, actually, I would lose a lot of money with eights here. I'm, I think. I'm, I'm thinking about that again, though. If you are Dwan in second position, are you really going to three bet the chip leader light right now? Call. Uh, by the way, I, I, would, I don't mind the eights play. Yeah. I, as gross as it hand, is. It's a big hand. Four handed, it's a big hand. You can be against that. So many hands you're crushing. And you realize what's about to happen, don't you, Phil? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look We're, at how big this pot is. This is just a monster pot. 1,124,000. It's Tom Dwan. Good game, Tom. We'll I'll see you back at the hotel. You just know, huh? Yeah. Oh my god, the eight came. Signs. Wow. Although there's been a lot of chops recently. Nine, ten. I would take a chop. He needs a, a nine, ten, or a jack. Nine, ten, or a jack. I'm ten, kind of. Nine would be a good card. This is terrible. Amazing. Nine, Two outs. I think they should. I think they should allow squeezing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. And that's why you do it with the eights. Even if you're behind, wow. you can still Which phone are you grab using? it. Like we go for drinks later, give you a call. Are you using Seven or two? Okay. But for Tom Dwan, arriving here from Hong Kong, it might feel a little, little unfortunate right now, but he's still looking good on six points. Despite coming in a little bit late, uh, Tom takes down six points in this heat. And you haven't been at the table a huge amount of time, but give me your impressions of how people are playing. Uh, you know, everyone seemed to be playing pretty tight, which is probably uh, about appropriate in this format. Unless, unless everyone's playing too tight, then you can take advantage. But uh, in this field, you know, in, in our heat at least, I would assume that you couldn't do that too much because most of the players are happy to get the chips in, and it seemed like they were restraining themselves in the short term. But I'm sure that won't happen too long. Will you be having a thought about how the point structure is going to affect you now going in with six points into the next match? You're kind of right in the middle. Yeah, um, I was trying to think about it at the table. I know I remember the last time I played this, I, I don't think I knew the right port structure or something like that, and I realized it like the third match. It probably wouldn't have made any difference, but I just felt like an idiot. Like, wow, I wonder if I missed stuff. Um, but yeah, I was trying to think about it when I was playing a little bit. It didn't really affect much, but uh, it's you know it affects more in like the third or fourth rounds how you're supposed to play. So, well, we look forward to seeing you playing in those. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Scott Seaver. Now, so dominating, so strong for that 16 points. You wonder what's going to be in it here with Jungle Man and Antonius. Scott Seaver is currently the chip leader here for this heat. Uh, how has the game been going for you? The game has been going really well. I've gotten some big hands. I won a big flip against Yevgeny, and I just got very lucky with my pocket eights beating Tom's pocket jacks. But that's what it takes to do well in one of these things, and that's what I was saying beforehand. I'm just hoping to get the luckiest, and then I'll win. I think you're being a little bit modest there. Um, you've been in some really interesting spots as well at the table and playing really well. A lot of the commentators are saying so. Uh, give me your thoughts on the other players. Everyone's playing really well. It's just such a tough lineup, and I'm just trying to hold my own, and hopefully things will break my way. The always modest Scott Seaver. Thank you. Thank you. After the break, we return to Vienna as the remaining three players continue to battle it out for maximum points.
We're down to three players for the first heat of the second group of the Premier League main event. Let's get action restarted with your commentators, Jesse May and Phil Locke. Eight points guaranteed for all three players. Scott Seaver, however, Phil Locke, has a stranglehold right wow. now on trying to get that 16. Wow. He really does feel super powerful. Scott thinks anything less than second. Like, he saw, knows he can't lose, kind of in his mind. He's like, I'm probably going to get first if some... I could, if Antonius and Jungle have a big hand, then it, he could be fighting. This group B is so competitive, is going to be so competitive top to bottom that the desire to get a, to get those extra points from this point forward is, is tremendous right now. Guy who gets third here. It's gonna oh, make bingo, shape. except he is it a heart draw? No, it's semi bingo. It's just terrible that I mean, when you have a big hand like this, you need the other part to come through too, which is your opponent has to either be a sick bluffer or have a big hand, and neither one is really happening here. So this will probably be a short hand. Raise seventy. A little check raise there from Seaver. I guess part of Antonius will be, well, he expects me to be betting air here. Right. But remember, Antonius is like, I gotta, I got I have more chips in the jungle, and I have nothing. And Bayes' theorem says if I bet and the guy raises, the chance he has a hand is higher than just, you know, it's t he might be bluffing, but whatever. It's, he's only bluffing 20%, 15% of the time there. So just let it go. Survival, you have to stay in the game. A lot of the, or there were, were some televised poker events in the past where heart monitors have been strapped to the plate. Do you ever have a heart monitor strapped on you, Phil? One time, I don't, I, I wasn't one of those steel caged guys that had no heart rate. I, mine was norm, normally fluctuating and stuff. Would you like to make a prediction as to which of the Premier League Guys, five players has the nice lowest 16. standing heart rate? I mean, are they doing that here again? No. They did it once, one, a long time ago. No. They did it once. No. I would take. Uh, of these three, I'm going to think Seaver has the highest heart rate, just because he's naturally excited and thinking about a lot of things. <laughs> Maybe he's got stoic poker prowl, but. <laughs> I mean, the other guys are basically flatlining on those heart monitors. So. <laughs> yeah, Seaver, who's who's always up for a good chat. You know, he's he's been giving Jungle Man a lot of openings. But Cates hasn't risen to the bait, and you're kind of just drawing dead with Antonius trying to engage him in the conversation. Um, right. You might as well just not bother. So it's <laughs> going to be a quiet three-handed match. That's all right. If you if you wanted to guarantee that Antonius was going to get engaged in conversation, what would your opening be? What 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 subject would you choose? To just absolutely guarantee Finnish independence, perhaps. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know either. Um, I don't know. This is like sick. This hand is actually big enough that you can just consider flatting. He did it. Yeah. Wow, he really did it. It's a bit gambly, but it's it's the right kind of gamble to take, right? Right. I, I like this play. I would do this with kings as well sometimes. Now he's just praying your opponent okay. has a, a queen. And Cates has done this enough. <coughs> flatted from the small blind enough that I don't think the warning bells have to go off here if you're if you're Antonius, although he has checked behind. If it went check, Jungle will definitely bet this because now there's all sorts of weird things. Oh, Jungle's first, okay. Antonius has picked up the straight draw. So this not over. 
So just calling for the eight outs is a negative play in itself, isn't it? Oh boy, he got it. He certainly did. The <laughs> Campbell has not paid off for Jungle Man. You kind of feel for him, don't you? This will be a, a bet, if, and when it goes raise, he'll fold. I think he'll just hold on. He knows he. You know, well, he, no, he might call. Actually, he does he, have aces. He's got I'm, a pot size bet back. I think he's going to bet one six a year. Let's see. He's bet at least half his stack. Two thirty. This is not a fun place for Jungle Man to be. I don't know, Jungle Man just feels sick because that board is so too parish and, you know, it's, it's too parish and straightish. It's tough. Can't see him. Wow. I, I really can't see him passing. Yeah, but he's Jungle Man. He plays perfect, so he knows he's beaten. He's going to fold. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> he's calling. But he knows he's beat. The math says call-ish, but the hand flow says fold-ish. So <laughs> <sighs> the laugh just jiggled some brain chemistry, and now he's going to know he's restabilized. Obviously a, a massive decision, and he's entitled to take his call. time. He's gone for it. He's gone for he it. Knew he doesn't was like the result. Eyebrows knew. raised as he sees how many outs there were against him. It was, it was just the eight outs. It's a bit unlucky. And, you know, at the end of the day, no, no. Phil, uh, similar to Duan, I think Jungleman, he's going to, if he ends up in third, he'll have played great. It's still a good start for the league. He Correct. hasn't lost that much. And you have to think like that because it's really four matches and you've got to just accumulate points and getting to the finals is what it's all about. Juggle man, only three and a half big blinds right now. It's it's not pretty, but he knows what he has to do. And when you think of a couple of the hands Jungleman lost, you know, after most of the money went in, a couple chops on the river that he'll feel like he didn't deserve, didn't go his way. This is just a... His stack is so marginal. He, he has to probably, I guess with that stack, you... You stick it in. Uh, you stick it you in. You stick it yeah. in. You, you, can't, you can't call. You can't fold. You can't call. Not very good. I guess not. I was going to say, it's pretty good. <laughs> not very good hand. It's pretty good again. Um, and the big the big factor there was that 30,000 that yeah. Juggleman had already in. Not for long. Uh, this could be the beginning a of a great, great comeback for the Vine Man, the Jungle Man. Banana man. Wow. I'm pretty good at this game. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and unless the king comes, which is a bit unfair. A bag of peanuts <laughs> is now more five, like a sack. Receiver, 1.27 million, but obviously, right now it's between Kate's and the invisible clock, which are the blinds going round. Six big blinds is not even a short stack. It's a, right. it's a, it's a mini stack. It's a stack you don't care if the chips go in first, last, sideways, yeah. Yeah. Uh, upside down, from your mouth. Yep. Between two slices of bread. Call. call. Three raise all in, five call. <laughs> a shove, a call. Jungleman's ahead here. Yep. And now the cat could <sighs> grab a new bird. I mean, um, if Jungleman doubles up here. He'll be virtually level with Antonius. He's picked the right guy to take this on. Against this poker is so brutal and filled with so many, you know, stumbly things. Look at this. 
It yeah. looks like all over for Jungle Man. He has to hit the three outer. He's or not, runner runner. Yeah, he's not been a great flipper today. The Jungle Man. Down to th three outs, and that's it. Wow. wow. <laughs> Look at that smile. That's that's the biggest smile. That's the guy who was like swinging class. through the jungle, yeah. let go of one vine, going for the other vine. The vine wasn't there, and he has, he's swinging his hands around. At the last second, he catches a vine. Or a strawberry. But yes, yes, or falls into a lake falls instead of a cliff. Falls yeah. into a lake, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Three more hands. You're so right. Nico, Alex and Patrick Sidov on Fish 2. Nico, Alex, Patrick Sidov. So that's, there's a, there's a cash game back in the back, and that's the brush or the floor guy calling players for the tables and stuff. Yeah, seat open. The tables fill up by, by mid to late evening. There's at least 25, 30 cash games going on just on this floor, in addition to the high limit room down below and the tournament area next to that. Uh oh, wow. Well, this is just a, you call it a cooler, but there's so many cooler situations, but it'll just be in in. And Antonius and Cates will race for the chance to take on Seaver, basically. Yep. That's but I guess confidence is super, super important. I'm scared to even watch this one come out. Me too. It's yeah. just, it's Daniel Cates versus Antonius. Yeah, so. And as we Ace saw, queen, there we go. Yeah, as we right, saw right. Seaver fold a queen, uh, a it makes so things even unlikelier. A nine is dead, so that makes the chop less, less <laughs> likely. Uh oh. The backdoor Jack. Jack, queen, nine, ten are all good cards. Jack, queen, nine, ten. Two is right, no good. All right. We're going to be heads up. Jungleman will take eight points here. And listen, Strong. he's in the winning zone. Now we're like exactly tied. Congrats for the first heads up. <laughs> We've just lost Daniel here. Um, let's talk about the, the match in general. How do you feel that your play was in the match? Um, pretty good. I didn't really do too much wrong. I maybe made a bad call with the aces and what our last stands. But overall, I think I played fine. Did you get any information that you may have needed for the next heat? I know you've played against these guys a fair amount, actually, already. Um, I played against them mostly heads up, uh, but that different chance, uh, that differs a lot from um, how they play full ring and how they play in tournaments, etc. So I didn't, so I don't really know how these guys play in those games. Um, I got a little bit of information, but not as much as I hoped for. Okay, well, good luck in the next one. Thank you. All right, thanks. We are heads up here in Group B's first league match. Coming up, find out who can take down maximum points. We're heads up here for the first match of the second group, and uh, the chip stacks are pretty even here. So looking at the fact that you have about 40 big blinds, is there a lot of movement that you can do here? There, there's always a ton of play in poker, and it's heads up, and I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. And you played a fair amount of heads up poker. I think that's probably like an understatement of the year, so you must be feeling pretty confident here in this structure. No, not really, <laughs> but uh, I would say it's a 50-50 right now. Okay, well, hopefully you're feeling better as well. I know you had a little bit of a cold, so uh, good luck to both of you. I'm going to get you to shake hands. Thanks. Good luck. <laughs> it's been building to this since the start. Scott Seaver on the one end, Patrick Antonius on the other. They've taken turns dominating this heat and have clashed more than a few times already, Phil. Yeah, they have. They are willing to play pots and with thin holdings too. It's quite exciting. The biggest pot, of course, between these two early on. Seaver made the turn bluff against Antonius. Looking at their stats though, not much in it now. Chip counts very close. Uh, do they have similar styles of play? No, I don't think so. Seaver likes to steal more than Antonius, is what I think. I've, I've watched them both play televised cash games. Seaver's more willing to be into tricky spots and just blast his way out of it, I think. 
Antonius Moore kind of guy. He's a little higher. more selective and that sort of thing. Um, no, they both can make the big calls. They can both, they both know where they're at. I just think that Seaver's a little bit wider, you know, steel range, wide, call range, bluff range. I just think it's a little wider. Antonius has fought big here, not really in relation to the board as much to Seaver's hand. Right, yep. Check. And Six. Check. I guess Patrick's sort of in check call mode. Seaver now actually has wow. <laughs> for backdoor two and pair. He's definitely going for value here. This is funny. Do you raise here? You know you're winning, but if you decide you're winning and you raise and you get re raised, now you know you're losing. So. Can you really get called? I think it's a call. I would not raise this. Really? I mean, so many hands that Patrick would check twice and bet on the river. It's such a weird spot. He would have called, by the way. If it went check, bet, he could have called. Well, it's, it's ridiculous uh, spot for Antonius because, right? It, this is just it, a spot the, where Seaver knows he's ahead and is betting for value. And, and, and also, Phil, isn't it? I mean, you have to, to, to make the marginal raises and try and get chips because right. they're worth double. Every chip you take away from your opponent, it's not like a cash game where it's right. unlimited. It's true. You're taking it away from your opponent, you're adding it to your stack. Which adds incentive to Antonius thinking, well, maybe he's bluffing because there's more incentive to get these chips. Good play. Okay. And, and Antonius probably thinking, hey, he's got the 3-4. That's what it was, had to be the 3-4. Else. It's funny, that's the last hand in his <laughs> Out of all the hands he could <laughs> make, if he made a list of all the hands. <laughs> that would be the where last he one. Was, yeah, that would be the last one. Like, <laughs> how did he have three, four? <laughs> yeah. um, Seaver, obviously, lots of tournament experience, lots of sit and go experience. I know he plays cash games as well, but Antonius, you know, would be known as one of the guys, one of the best in the world at high stakes, no limit, heads up, hold him. Um, yep. Seven to five. Yeah, I mean, they both played a ton of poker, but Seaver's way more of a tournament guy, I think. I see him in the tournaments more than the cash games. And from, a, from an age standpoint, even though Antonius is still considered sort of a guy who came off the internet, uh, the part of the internet that Antonius came off was sort of the dawn of the internet, if you know yeah, what I mean. Right, the super beginnings where the biggest game was 10:25 or something, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Antonius probably the, was playing back on the internet when Check. when Scott Seaver was still in high school, um, or Ellen, or <laughs> maybe <laughs> earlier. Let's see. Eighty-five, Seaver. He was born in 1985. No, he's going to bet eighty-five thousand. Oh. He knows he can't win. He may have been born in 1985. Six bet. Oh, he goes for 105. Two hundred and ten. Two ten. <laughs> over bets. That's uh, because he knows that his opponent doesn't have. A, wow. Such a polarized bet. I want to see the call, even though, I, like, I don't want to see it. I want to see it, because ultimately I'm not making this call, and I like seeing good poker. Oh my God, is he is he reaching for? <laughs> he's smiling. He just to himself. can't believe he's not. He's like he really. Poker. He's smiling because he's really thinking. You know, I'm gonna make this call, and the guy's gonna have a full house, isn't he? He's gonna have a four deuce or quad or four or flush, <laughs> eight high flush, <laughs> thinking I was gonna call with the five. Ah, oh, I thought he was gonna wow. do it. And I was I gonna say, gonna... do you think the bet size was clever or bad by Seaver? It was perfect because if it was less. Actually, maybe it wasn't perfect, because if it was less, it would get folds more often, I would think. I would think if you bet, like, one-fifth, if you bet two-thirds the pot, you're getting more folds, I would think. He was just trying to get a real hand to fold. He didn't realize, wow, that was a weird hand. That, that's twice now, and from where I'm counting, where... Seaver's where a robber. Seaver likes to rob he's people. He's a robber. If I get to the final table with him and I get a big hand, I am going to just check it to him. Meanwhile, there's no shame in folding, but he limped. I don't like. I don't like what he just did there. 
I would just fold. Sometimes you can just fold. Well, who am I to speak? Oh, wait a minute. Bottom pair versus top pair. Right. Three bet, 40,000. I mean, this is... Six call. He just calls. He's playing this hand like he's had has the nuts, Scott Seaver. That's... It's yep. not the nuts, but he's gonna. I guess he's gonna play it like it is the nuts. What I mean is, no matter what the turn is, he's still gonna be calling, right? He's still yep. gonna be. And now, if a hard comes, he's lost it to Antonius with the higher. Three five. There's. It's probably gonna be a value bet. You can't really, since the turn went check check. You can't really expect to bet on the turn, so he has to. I mean, from a sizing point of view. Isn't it so obvious how different the size of that bet is compared to the the one where he uh, he was bluffing? Yeah, what he bet just ninety. Yeah, he bet like about Half pot instead of. Does that pot total in the upper left hand corner of the screen reflect the ninety as well? It, or it does. So he it was ninety into one sixty. Okay. And if Patrick calls here. To me, it just feels like Seaver's got him on a rope. I mean, you tug, he calls. You push, he passes. It's, it's mind control. He's going to make the good fold again, isn't he? He's been, the problem is, he hasn't seen a Seaver hand in a long time. He's, he his curiosity is yeah. killing him. Uh, Seaver's just, I mean, the rhythm wise, I mean, listen, if, I mean, you'd stop this if it was a fight. You know what yes, I mean? If it was a fight, I mean, you would stop it. You'd be like, this is wrong. People are getting hurt. Let's all go home, <laughs> have a little rest. <laughs> Antonius is getting crushed by the big brain from Brown. But I mean, w it's so funny because one double up <laughs> and he is, yeah. Shipley, it's like, of course he is. it's it's been so clinical though. Um, you yeah. know, yeah, you kind of feel like six goal. Patrick's gonna need a little practice. He's gonna need a little practice okay. in the old heads up arena. <laughs> oh boy. So many of these flops where everyone has nothing. Six bet, 40,000. Well, you know, it's, it, it is a flop for 3-4. Three, 3 call. Now, Patrick's got plans to try and win this on a later street, even if he misses the deuce. Presumably, if certain cards come. It'll have to be a, a bet on the river if it goes check, check, or is there... Because it goes check, check here a lot. No. And uh, if Patrick bets here and Seaver raises him, then, bet. you know, it, it should just be over. 110. Yep. But, I mean, what's going to happen is Seaver's just going to fold. Yes. Unless he's some uber wizard that knows... Blah, blah, blah. But it's reasonable that a king five would call there. Or like a five, six, or a four, five. Six, I think he's just going to fold it. I mean, he has Jack Kai, too, whatever. Well. Yeah, he's yeah. winning all the money. <laughs> I know. He's. Uh, that's the thing these pros are good at. When they fire with air and they get resistance, they go, you know what? Whatever. I win enough of these firing with air things that I don't have to fight <laughs> when, I, when I get any resistance. <laughs> Which is also parallel with good poker. 1.7 to 0.7. I would, uh, how much is in the pot right now? Huh. Yeah, Antonius has only got 17 big blinds. Nice. Wow, he just doesn't stop. No. I might go on. It's like you have some fold equity, and it's a very strong hand. Even against, like, I mean, the problem is it is six high. 
The only way to play it now is fold or all in. You can't call, I don't think. I might be a bad commentator because I do too many suicidal gut things <laughs> that are probably like abhorrently your, wrong. I like you know? your decisions, but these guys, you know, just seem to, they See, always I'm, seem to I'm find never another call, way. I mean, I might call, I guess. I'm out of position. Would I call? Yeah. It's, I'm, it, he has it, position. It, He's the last I one. I don't think he can call. I don't I would think just, he can call either. I'm just, now what's going to happen? The four high is going to bet and the hand's over. Six check. Oh, he checks. Why did he check? I guess Seaver feels like Three there's check. no way I can make this bet. And then right, the pot's And so then on big. that board, there's no way, there's no hand he can have that he can fold for the rest. I. Seaver's gonna be gobsmacked. If a, if a comes a deuce. Comes. Well, they're both playing the board now. Is thinking. <laughs> Not Seaver. Seaver's thinking. Well, does he have a nine? <laughs> this is just. This is a bet born from desperation. Antonius hasn't been making the kind of plays where, like, look, I can win by the guy folding. And you got to be doing that. With the 5 6. What if your opponent has King 8? Is he going to, or Ace Jack? Is he really going to call the May? He would have with Ace Jack, I suppose. Wow. I don't know. I guess that wasn't too funky a hand, but I just, I would what open with a raise. Antonius is just, he's just tossing away money. He's I would, it I would down. either limp, shove, or raise, fold. Antonius could have won that pot. Now that we know, he could have won it pre-flop, on the flop, on the turn, or on the river. Could have chopped, yeah, on the river. Could have called for a chop on the river with six high. That would be a sick one. Six call. Three check. That's too big a hand to flat. I, I would have jammed there. King, maybe not. King six and up, I, I jam in that spot. King three is pretty, like, middle of the... This is a favorable spot for Patrick Antonius. It's the best spot he's had in so long yes. that he's supposed to call here and not raise, and he knows that. Sweet call. And well, as you've pointed out several times, Phil, it, it, it looks much worse by the cards that come out where you say, oh, Antonius get right. owned. And he hasn't now had anything. And now with the queen, he's going to check. The funny thing is in these heads-up things, I like to just evaporate the top card and then see how I'm looking at. I, I like to look at my hand after I evaporate the top ranking card because that kind of is a good rule of thumb. can get you into some tr problems. But like 60. now he's value betting, he's hoping to get paid by a nine. It's the only explanation. Too thin. Too thin. Maybe not. No, king. King. But look at he's going for those value bets. Right, he's, he, that was a value bet. That wasn't a hand turned into a bluff. He's like, oh, he's going to have like tens or nine. Actually, he can't have tens, right? He would have heard about it pre-flop. Still in it is Antonius and Granite. Perhaps he's unyielding. Scott Seaver, of course, not without his share of big results. I think he won the 25K WPT Championship recently. Uh, and that, I think they got down to the final 10 or 12 there, and it was just what a lineup. Uh, here, here, Antonius limping with the Jacks. Yep. And, and is going to end up getting some money out of this now. Yep. So maybe, maybe there was a plan, Phil. 70. Seaver's value betting against, like, all the aces. And and this is a p spot where you can't really raise. You just have to call and hope the guy doesn't have call. a draw that gets there or has a deuce five. I mean, when you raise there, what, the guy's always folding unless he has to beat. Yeah, you can't beat the six or the king, so Patrick's in a funny spot. Um, uh, what do you foresee Seaver doing on the river here? I He's been making some funny value oh, bets. He never stops. I thought he was going to be psychic and just stop when he knew when when he wasn't winning. Ninety. Wow, he, this is so weird because against a normal poker player, Jax feels so empty right now because the flush got there. Any six is winning. Any king value bet is good. You're only beating a bluff. You're because your opponent's never gonna value bet like a pair of fives, you know, or Woody, mate. No. 
I'm, I'm so Patrick get... can only beat a bluff. Well, the, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, he can only beat a bluff. But isn't this isn't this sort of the uh, the it's... merge where <laughs> it's supposed to be <laughs> this supposed to, it's supposed to be a bluff or a, it's or a, a hand, but actually a... it's a thin value bet. Bluff. <laughs> Seaver knows he's bluffing. Seaver knows he's turning a real hand to bluff. No, maybe not. Maybe he thinks I'm going to get called by Ace Queen. <laughs> And just okay. like that, Antonius has gone most of the way towards leveling the score. Well, they've been heads up now, I believe, since about that big spike where you can see at the end there around hand number 150. And Antonius dribbles, dribbled down, and now come back. Find out after the break who takes maximum points here in Vienna. Welcome back to Party Poker Premier League Poker 5, where heads up in Group B's first league match. The winner will be awarded 16 points and will take the top spot on the league table. In the Group A heads up match, Phil, yourself and Andy Frankenberger, it was it was actually quite a slugfest. It went on for um, went on for quite a long time, three, four levels pretty much. Yep. Uh, there was a feeling that that was kind of a one-off, that the heads-up matches wouldn't go on long in Group B or throughout the rest of the Premier League. I would, with 8-9 of diamonds heads-up, if somebody did it get raised, I would have jammed it. It has not 60. been raised. It's been a limp from oh, limp, Scott I, Seaver. I, limp there. I guess I'd be happy to take the, the limp. Antonius leading out. It's sort of a, a new wrinkle. He's been mostly checking the flop when uh, when Seaver's limped. No matter what he's had. He now has to decide whether to bet again or 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 check and get money in. They're basically level now. Uh, Antonius, who's gone about things his way. Wow, they really are. Look at that. There's one thing about Antonius that uh, I've seen in, I've heard about him that uh, has been completely exhibited here this evening throughout this match. Nice. Um, I think he's called the sort of the untiltable poker player, the maybe the least tiltable poker player in poker. Um, and not that there's anything here that would make him tilt, but early on in that heads up match, Check. if anybody could have gotten tilted, it would have been time for it. Is he gonna find a way to win this pot? This is something that he hasn't been doing in the heads up, Phil. He's been, he's been checking back the flop so often. Yep. This is a value call, it's pretty tough. This is why oh. guys like Seaver are hard to play against, because they just call with the best hand, and it's garbage, but it's still the best hand. Oh, my lord. Super bingo. Mandatory check. Hope for a bet. If Antonius checks here, he's pretty much giving up on the pot, and it's a big pot. Yep. <sighs> you know, you think to yourself, is it a good card to double barrel? It's just a timing thing. I mean, these plays usually work, but Seaver just hit a three outer, you know? This this pot feels massively oh. crucial in the dynamics of this match. Obviously, Seaver's not folding. Right. Now, this call can be thought of oh. in Antonis's mind as, hey, maybe he has like, pocket fives with the five of clubs or so oh this Check. doesn't really change anything i guess it doesn't change anything but uh it's much more likely that he fires again antonius only has a pot size bet back but he doesn't fall, but he knows he's being trapped Board. Okay. 
playing the board, says Patrick. And Scott will get it. There, there probably was some cards that Antonius was going to be willing to, to fire the third bullet on. He didn't like the seven. Maybe right. seven was one of the, the cards he was trying to get Seaver off of. Or maybe he just said, you know, my opponent called pre-flop, flop, and turn. Do I really need to barrel the fourth card? Like, what am I, you know, maybe I just live to fight another day. I've come back from 600 before. All he, I have is jack high. He has, and he's there again. Antonius on 11 big blinds. And I know there's a school of thought out there, Phil, that that doesn't believe, that believes that with 11 big blinds, it should be all in or pass. It's not the only school of thought out there. I'm, I, I'm gonna be highly aggressive on it. This is all in for Seaver, I think. All in. Amazingly, all in. if Antonius calls, he's just a huge favorite. Show me the turn. Just a huge favorite. <laughs> Look how big a favorite Patrick is with the seven high. <laughs> That's so crazy. Is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. Show it, show it, show it. Next card, show one more, show one more. Show one more. Good. I lose more. Well, funny enough, the seven actually plays there, doesn't it? Yep. Last hand, yeah. Last yeah. for this level. There is no level after this, I thought, in the structure. Right? There's really no need for that. It's Next hand, the blinds yeah, go to 4080. Yeah, so now it's just, yep. it's just shove festing. All in, call. All in and the call. I like the and king eight all in. It's a flip. And it's fair. Ace, uh, Seems fair. <laughs> As is it's Scott Seaver, <laughs> now the first <laughs> chance to take this one down. They both played well. See, no need for the next But one. I actually feel like an eight's gonna come. <laughs> an, an eight of diamonds or something. Ooh. You've been too unlucky unless, today. Unless it's gonna come again. I think it is. You've just been too unlucky today. It's gonna be a oh, four he has or a five on a turn. Yeah, there are some backdoor draws. Eight. Yeah. I'll, I'll now a four. four or five on river. <laughs> Let me just squeeze a two across. Or Ace ten. or the four. Good game, Patrick. Ten. Wow. <laughs> That's how I play poker. I just know what's coming. <laughs> I kind of like this. I kind of like right? that it's now one million to one yeah. million again. It's like this. And now we're going to see, they both have 10 or 12 big blinds. We're going to just see shove. It's going to be like, more shoving. I like shoving. It's going to be like bam, bam, bam for those five points, right? I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, Patrick, who has been on the back foot this whole heads up, is now got himself back to level. Blinds at 40, 80,000. They kind of so it's not necessary. Well, this thing is going to get over in a hurry no matter what. I think this is the top level, Phil. Yes, they, I'm going to predict it. Seven hands or less. That's my prediction. I'm going to say five exactly. Am I crazy to say I'd go all in? Let's see, wait. One, what's the minimum raise? 160, so 240. Maybe you're not supposed to. I don't even know, bro. I'm, I don't even know. I mean. King six just feels so huge, but it vulnerable at the same time. Heads up. That's why. I have a feeling there's a classically. Scott Seaver would never raise with 12 big blind, against 12 big blinds of king six to pass, but he feels like he may be able to against Patrick. I, I, I wonder about that, Phil. I don't know. He's definitely, um, what is this? A straight versus top pair, I think. It's the end. It's, it's Antonius! It is the end. And Antonius has a flush draw to defend against the potential six of spades flush draw. Oh my God, Patrick won this thing. This is so crazy. I think he has. I mean, how how can, if I get that flop and that, and I, I'm all in, and, 12 and, big and blinds. And Antonius has King led King. here. Don't you just have to jam him? I think you have to jam. Because the guy can have like an eight of spades, ace of hearts, and now what are you doing? You're actually, with? in some, some ways, you actually, you can't be too scared because you have to let him bluff if you have him beat. 
Is that the you other never thing? Never know. What if he has ace of hearts, eight of spades, or what if he has? I don't know. Like, what a look weird at now. Card. Now the scared card comes off, and Antonius is thinking, "Well, I'm, I might just be beat by the ace ten or whatever." Six check. Now both having flushes. Patrick has to bet. Patrick has the second nuts, right? Yeah. He has to. It's too strong a hand. Right. He only can lose to an ace of spades. Say, so, but it, it's a, it's a strong enough hand that you. Yeah, and you're, you're going to get called by any random spade a lot of the time. Well, How much to bet is what he's thinking. So he has 700, and the pot's 640. He's probably going to bet like 450. Interestingly enough, it's weird it didn't go all in on the flop. Uh, Seaver can pretty much eliminate the ace of spades from Antonius's hand. Because it would have gone in pre-flop. Yeah, it would. Right, wouldn't so it? he's beat by the jack, the nine, and the eight. You know, six is not exact. I mean, six isn't. Is it, is it only a bluff catcher? Maybe it still only is a bluff catcher. But it really is. There's not like <laughs> there's only three cards in the deck theoretically that beat him. Isn't it weird? How much? Three sixty. Three sixty. Look at that. He. I think I just have to take my lumps on this one. Call. Those are the lumps. And now, for the first time in the heat, Antonios is crushing souls. Unbelievable. Wow. 1.7 million to, well, one point it roughly. It was kind of funny somehow wow. that the money didn't, didn't go in on the go flop. In. Yeah. As Scott Seaver says. I mean, the way Seaver played it, he has to call the river. Right. Three six. I mean. He said, I think I have to take my lumps here. And. Really That's what he to. did. <laughs> His patient, patient. Yeah. Like, it pays off. What can you say? It's a good what, strategy. What That's what I say? do, kind of. You know, it's what, a win. Listen, you know. But Seaver looked like Seaver's strategy was the win well, way to go. Well, like, well it, Antonius can get called here and still be well, way ahead. Ace Jack feels, Ace -track feels <laughs> like the, the winner. One, it's fine. Uh-oh. I think Patrick's got him. Wow. That's what I'm less happy about. Oh, I thought he said call. Yeah, he did say call. And and see, oh. it is an automatic call for Seaver with the ace three, but <laughs> it is, ace but jack so strong. So brutal. Oh, oh wow. I'm very happy now. Any three or a, a five. That's a lot of outs. Feels like half the deck. Look at that. It's 27% for that little bit. And now a queen is good, too, good for, for a chump. Makes it too likely something good happens. <laughs> Plenty of cards. That's not one of them. Wow. The Can't Jack I, plays. I, I got Jack. Well played. Congrats from Patrick. Yeah, Congrats to it. Patrick yeah. Antonius. Phil Lock hung in there. Yep. He got beat down a few times, but he just kept. He was an unkillable cockroach. He would not go down. Scott takes down 11 points here for this first heat, so not a bad start. Um, you were you were doing so well, especially three-handed, and then in the heads up, it just kind of turned against you. Describe how that happened. Everything was going great. I was really enjoying the feel of heads up. I thought I was doing well. I was winning a lot of pots, and I lost a couple flips. It happens. You must be pretty happy with the, how things worked out here today. What was your experience at the table? Uh, I'm extremely happy because I feel uh, kind of out of it. I'm, I've been sick the last couple of days, so, so I feel like I'm definitely not playing uh, well right now. And uh, I got very good cards in this heat, and it was a lot of luck. But. Uh, yeah, first first time and uh, not a bad start. Not a bad start at all. Maximum points. Good luck in the second round. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is how the league table looks after Group B's first league match. Patrick Antonius sits at the top with 16 points. Scott Siever and Jungle Man join him in the top three. Tom Dwan and Elkie are in the playoff zone and in the relegation zone is Yevgeny Timoshenko, Vanessa Selps, and Benjamin Wilanovsky. They will all have work to do when Group B returns to the table. Patrick Antonius has had a great start to this year's Premier League, taking down maximum points in Group B's first league match. Next time, Group A returns for their second heat, and for Luke Schwartz and Eugene Kachaloff, who are at the bottom of the league, it's a chance to get back in the mix here in Vienna. I'm basically out of the Premier League, down to my last animals. <laughs> I gotta deal with the stare down just to steal a freaking blind. I got the bagel last time, so I have to get some chips. 
This is a standard fold. Phil has lost his mind. I had the G on the ropes there, and you've just told him you had the nuts. I'm not getting any respect.